Hi Simmies! This is the first of a series that goes over the fundamentals of Sims 4 custom content. For me, trying to learn how to make CC was very challenging and hard to understand the fire hose of information. Many tutorials I found jumped right into 3D modeling and making a package file when I didn't even understand the basics. I searched for an overview just covering the fundamentals and I was never able to find one, which resulted in a long and painful learning experience. My hope is that these tutorials fill those gaps and spare you the suffering I endured. So let's take it slow, one thing at a time, and learn the fundamentals because I promise you it will save you so much time and pain in the future. You won't need any programs or tools for this tutorial, just grab a glass of wine and take it in. Let's get to it! For this overview, I'm using the Tray Chic Perfume Set object. I chose this object for a few reasons. First, it's base game compatible, so it's accessible for Sims players. Second, it's one of the most simple objects in the game because it's decor, it doesn't have interactions with Sims or complicated tuning. Also, the package file itself has all of the essentials, like three LODs, which I'll get into later, and really, it's just a cute object. At the very core of CC is a 3D object, which is built using a mesh, UV map, and texture. There's quite a bit more that goes into it, but for a beginner, these are the core principles you need to understand. From there, you can work your way up. For clarity and more experienced CC artists watching this, the use of the word texture in the context of this tutorial is not 100% accurate. The texture is actually made up of a few different parts, but I'll only be going over the diffuse part today. The diffuse is what actually adds the base color to the item. So for simplicity and to not overwhelm you with terms, I'm going to just refer to the diffuse as the texture in the rest of this overview. Before creating a UV map or texture, you need to make a mesh. So that's where we'll start. 3D meshes are built from 2D polygons, which are commonly referred to as polys. A polygon is really just a 2D shape that has a minimum of three sides. For creating CC, polys never have more than three sides, so really, they're just triangles. If you have ever opened a mesh in a 3D modeling program like Blender, you may have taken one look at it and gotten intimidated. Same for me. So to make this part easy on the eyes, I have taken just the pink perfume bottle from the perfume tray. The pretty mesh on the left is the mesh with its texture overlaid. You can start to see the polygons that make up the bottle. Taking away the texture, we have the solid mesh with the polys becoming a little bit more visible. Finally, we have the wireframe mesh where you can really see the polygons that make up all of the sides. There is nothing different between these meshes besides how I displayed them. Let's focus on the solid mesh to dig deeper into polys. All of these views were taken from Blender, which is a free 3D modeling program. But we don't need to worry about Blender now. Just know the terms I'm about to cover are very important to creating meshes in Blender and other 3D modeling programs. Looking at a single poly, it is a 2D face with three sides. The dot in the middle shows the center point of the face, which is useful in Blender, but not important here. Each face is made up of three edges, and then each edge is made up of two vertices. These parts of a poly become important later because they can impact how the final CC looks in the game. For now, just know a poly is made up of a face, edges, and vertices. This next concept applies specifically to making a mesh for a game like The Sims. In most cases, CC has multiple meshes referred to by their level of detail, or LOD. There is the high LOD, which is the most detailed mesh, then the medium and low LOD meshes, which have decreasing levels of detail. Each LOD has a poly count, which is the number of polys that make up the mesh. In the case of the perfume tray, the highest LOD has 310 polys and the lowest has 126 polys. As a creator, making all of the LODs can be a pain, and as a player, you may not love how the low poly objects look. But I promise you, LODs and low poly meshes are your friend. Sims is considered a low poly game meaning the meshes that make up the objects in the world tend to have a lower number of polygons in their meshes. To give some perspective, at the extreme low end of low poly meshing is the game Minecraft. Sims, comparatively, is much more detailed than Minecraft and therefore has higher poly counts. Going to the other extreme of ultra high poly meshing are Pixar movies. I don't think anyone can disagree that Pixar movies look amazing, but a single frame of the movie Inside Out took 33 hours to render. 
Imagine rotating the screen on Sims and waiting 33 hours for it to load. Movies can do this because every aspect of it is predetermined, unlike Sims. In Sims, you get to customize your world, decorate your homes with tons of CC, and choose how your Sim interacts with the world. Because of this, the game is rendering real time. In Pixar movies, everything's predetermined, so they have the ability to use these high meshes and render ahead of time. Low poly meshes and well-made CC ensure your computer can render the game quickly as you play. The different LODs, high, medium, and low, that I just described play a crucial role in this process. As you change your viewpoint in Sims, the amount of objects that need to render changes. As you zoom out, more objects are in the screen, which means more work for your computer. To help with this, the 3D objects will swap out higher LOD meshes for lower LOD meshes as you move further away. The addition of all of these new objects and parts of the world is balanced by the lower LOD meshes, which have lower poly counts. This makes it easier on your computer to render everything, and since you're farther away, it's hard to tell the difference in detail between the higher and lower LOD meshes. Specifically for Sims, there are some unwritten but very important best practice guidelines for creating CC. The highest LOD, which is your most detailed mesh, should have a maximum of 1200 polys per in-game tile. For example, a love seat taking up two tiles should have a maximum of 2400 polys, while a one tile armchair should only have 1200 polys maximum. From there, it's about a 50% reduction of polys as you go down from medium to low LOD. Even though the maximum poly count for a high LOD is 1200 polys, you shouldn't try to always hit that. For example, the perfume tray I'm using in this tutorial, the highest LOD has 310 polys and the lowest has 126. The highest LOD doesn't need that much detail and it's pretty small, so its poly count is pretty low. The medium and low LODs don't exactly follow the 50% poly reduction, but this can be harder to achieve when you already start with a really low poly LOD. So again, these are just best practice guidelines. They have some flexibility, but the main takeaway from this is to follow the maximum 1200 poly per in-game tile. One last thing to note is that for cast CC, the maximum poly count is higher than object CC. I don't really know specifically what it should be. It's not really my area of expertise, but if I find more information on it, I will definitely share it with you. All right, so moving on. Once we have the mesh built, the next step is to create a UV map. The UV map wraps a 2D texture onto a 3D mesh. The name UV map is obscure at first, but it makes sense when you break it down. 3D objects use X, Y, and Z as a coordinate system, and 2D images use U and V as its coordinate system. So because a UV map is literally mapping a 2D texture to a 3D object using UV coordinates, it is called a UV map. A really important aspect of UV maps is that each LOD has its own UV map, but they all share one texture. There's a lot that goes into this, which I'll definitely go over in the future, but for now, it's just good to know the basics. You almost always want to build the highest LOD first, make its UV map, make the texture, test it in game, and then move on to making the lower LODs. Making lower LODs is one of the last things I do, which is something I learned the hard way. Once you have made the UV map, you can apply a texture to the mesh. Again, there's a lot more I can go into about making a texture, but for the sake of this overview, we're going to look at the already created texture for the perfume tray. Similar to earlier in the overview, we're just going to look at the pink bottle from the full tray. So at this point, the mesh has been built, the polys were flattened and mapped out into a UV map, and now it's been overlaid with a texture. I previously showed the full UV map in the earlier slides, but since we're now looking at just the pink bottle, this UV map represents just that part of the object. Each part of the texture is projected onto the poly that overlays it. This is why making the UV map first is really important, because when you start to create the texture, you need to know what parts of it are going to go where onto the 3D mesh. So now we've covered the 3D mesh, the UV map, and the texture. Putting all of these different parts together, you get a rendered object that you see here. 
This is the point in the process of creating CC where you can start to build up your package file and test it in game. In the upcoming tutorials, I will cover what programs are needed, how to use them, and ultimately walk you through the process of making your first CC, which is super exciting. The programs themselves can be quite intimidating, which is why understanding these fundamentals first is so important. I hope you found this tutorial helpful, and please feel free to reach out if you have any questions.